Performing flight 6 to Sedo from Yellowknife, Canada, with 17 people on board, departed Yellowknife in freezing rain. What? Freezing rain? Are you kidding me? The Canadians don't do that. Hello aviators, how are you today? My name is Magnar Nordahl, I'm an airline captain and instructor on ATA aircraft. Today is a Saturday, 23rd of December. One of my morning rituals is to check the Aviation Herald for interesting news. And today did an article really wake me up. My first reaction was disbelief, then anger, and then I started to think some information is not correct. It cannot be. Anyway, here is the article posted by Simon Radke in Aviation Herald. Incident, Aviation North, ATR 42 at Yellowknife on December 10th, 2023. Stick shaker immediately after takeoff. A Canadian North Avions de Transport Regional, ATR 42-300, registration Charlie, Golf Kilo Lima Bravo, performing flight 620 from Yellowknife to Koglutuk, is that correct, Canada, with 17 people on board, departed Yellowknife in freezing rain. After being de-iced. However, immediately after rotation for takeoff, the stick shaker activated and a flight control indication activated. The crew stopped the climb at 1500 feet, identified a stick shaker fault and retracted the landing gear. However, now received indication the right main gear had not come up. The gear was selected on again, three greens were observed. The crew declared pan pan and returned to Yellowknife for a safe landing. The Canadian TSB reported prior to departure, one eight inch, that's three millimeters of ice, had been observed on exterior of the aircraft. The aircraft was de-iced, the anglo tack vanes were checked for freedom of movement. However, immediately after rotation for takeoff, the stick shaker activated. Subsequently, the right hand landing gear showed unsafe indication upon gear retraction. After landing back, the maintenance team conducted a landing gear retraction overspeed inspection, replaced the right hand main landing gear uplock box, replaced the crew alerting computer, and cleaned the angle of attack sensors. A satisfactory verification flight was completed and the aircraft was returned to service. End quote. What shocked me was that the aircraft reportedly departed in freezing rain. Freezing rain is rain that is falling into a layer of cold air below freezing temperature. The rain will freeze when impacting an object like an aircraft. Until 2015, new aircraft types in the transport category are not certified for operating in freezing drizzle and freezing rain. And not only that, but the runway will be transformed to a skating rink. I'm talking from my own experience here. When I was a student pilot in Norway, I had a small job doing ground handling for a small company operating Dornier D0228. One cold winter afternoon, just after the aircraft had parked on the apron, it started to rain. It did not take long before the aircraft was covered in ice and icicles. My clothes were covered by a shell of ice, and when I moved, pieces of ice broke off. The apron became super slippery, and I had difficulty walking back home. After the first shock, I started to search for more information. The first thing I discovered is that I have flown that aircraft. 20 years ago, Charlie Golf Kilo Lima Bravo was registered Lima November, Foxtrot Alpha India. It was operated by my employer Coaster in Norway. Suddenly, this had become personal. I was not able to find information about the incident on the website to the Transport Safety Board of Canada. But I found the METAR. At the time of departure, 1600 Mountain Standard Time, or 2300 UTC, the weather was as following. Wind, 340 degrees, 1-2 knots, gust 22 knots. Visibility, 15 statue miles, 
24 kilometers, light snow, overcast clouds, 1300 feet, temperature minus 14, dew point minus 15, altimeter 29.67 inches mercury, hot air relief, only light snow, no freezing rain. But still, this was an interesting incident. It is very rare you experience two system failures not related to each other. Just a detail, the 42300 and 320 are the only ATA variants without a multifunction computer, MFC. Instead, those functions are provided by many small computers. This stall warning system is independent from other systems. An aircraft can stall at any speed and any attitude. There are two angle of attack sensors, one of each side of the fuselage. When a certain angle of attack is exceeded, the stick shaker is activated by the crew alerting computer. If the angle of attack increases more, the stick pressure is activated, forcing the yoke forward. Together with activation of the stick shaker, the flight crew received a flight control alert. This indicates a stick pressure or stick shaker fault or pitch trim asymmetry. The faulty stick pressure and shaker is disabled by selecting this push button off. And I'm sure the crew did just that. The landing gear has two indicators. The primary indicator is on the central panel above the landing gear lever and the second indicator is on the overhead panel. On this ATA variant, the landing gear is controlled by two computers. Each computer receives signals from a pair of micro switches, one for each indicator. The landing gear is considered to be done and locked when all three green lights are shown on at least one of the indicators. In this case, the landing gear will not retract and the issue was rectifying by changing the up lock box. I have made a video about the landing gear and you find a link in the description below here. And that's all for this time. Thank you for watching. Tomorrow I will travel home and celebrate Christmas with my family. More videos will come next year. Until then, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year and Happy Learning!